Hi, I am Pravar Agrawal and I welcome you all to Kubernetes Community Days Bengaluru. I am very excited to be a part of this event as a first time speaker and today I will be introducing you all to an interesting tool called pscheduler. A little bit about me. I work as a DevOps engineer at IBM ISL for IBM Kubernetes service. And those are my different handles to reach out to me on Twitter, GitHub, and Slack. For today's agenda, we'll see what is Dscheduler, how it works and its different components, why do you need it in your project, and a little demo to show you around. If you have been following Kubernetes, then you surely would have heard about a core control plane component called Kubernetes Scheduler. While the scheduler is responsible for assigning nodes to the pods when it is created, it doesn't efficiently manage the pods based on node resources. Let's take an example. If you see this diagram, we have a multi-node cluster in which few of the nodes are underutilized maybe less than 30% of its CPU and memory resources. But some of the nodes have high usage of its resources. The scheduler does not automatically distribute the pod from overutilized nodes to underutilized nodes. But with the help of Descheduler, we'll be able to evict some of the pods from high resource utilized nodes and place those onto underutilized nodes. Descheduler is a Kubernetes 6 project maintained under 6 scheduling. It's an open source project written in Go, which runs as a Kubernetes add-on. It can be deployed inside a KTS cluster as a deployment, KTS job, cron job, or with the help of a help chart. Descheduler also supports a CLI, which can be used to interact with the Descheduler server running inside the cluster. Its main objective is to efficiently manage the node resources by evicting the pods from overutilized nodes and moving those to underutilized nodes. And it's able to do all of this with the help of custom policies or descheduler policies. The pod evictions based on different strategies which are part of these policies may include different strategies like high node utilization, low node utilization, pod age, failed pod count, etc. And here's a layout of some of the main components involved in Descheduler. We have a Descheduler server which runs inside a pod under the cube system namespace. And we also have a Descheduler policy config map, which has the different policy that's going to be used for pod evictions. Also, the server does all of its work with the help of different informers like pod, node, namespace, and priority class informer. These informers watch the different resources like nodes, pods for resource utilization. And they also send the information back to the descheduler server to take actions based on the policy defined and current state of the cluster. And here we also have a descheduler policy if you can see, it has strategies definitions which will include different strategy like no, low node utilization, high node utilization, pod maximum age, etc. And we need to pass some parameters like source thresholds and target thresholds, which define the overutilized nodes and underutilized nodes on which we want to shift our pod after eviction. The source threshold will reflect the node on which the pod will be placed after it's evicted from a highly utilized node. And the target threshold is the node once, uh, which is having the high uh, resource utilization. And now for the demo, we'll see how the descheduler works. And for this, I'll be using a policy which is called as pod lifetime policy policy uh, it will basically evict pods based on the maximum pod lifetime uh, in seconds so if we have some pods running in our cluster which are not being cleaned up
from past 30 days or uh, 20 days or maybe over a month or let's say even a higher number of uh, time then we can use this policy to clean those ponds i have a ktest cluster in my local and in the interest of the time i already have the scheduler running inside it I'll show you the current logs of the Descheduler server. As you can see, currently the total number of evicted pods is zero, but it is still scanning all the three nodes just to find if any of the policies, any of the criteria is being matched uh, with respect to the policy defined. We also have a config map. And currently, as you can see, the strategy which is defined in the config map is for the pod lifetime. And it takes in a parameter for maximum pod lifetime second, where you need to put in the value in seconds. So we'll just replace this random value and we'll put something like 600 seconds so that all the pods uh, which have a time of above 10 minutes will be deleted in our cluster, will be evicted in our cluster. So currently all the pods that we have, we do have few pods which are created 31 minutes back. So we'll try to evict these pawns. We'll restart the descheduler pod so that the new policy comes into effect. And we'll monitor the new pod for any changes. Okay. So as you can see, it has already started evicting pods. And here we can see that it has evicted about nine pods. And the reason listed is evicted pod because it's exceeded its lifetime. And it also specifies the pod name and the node from which it has been evicted. And if you quickly search through all the pods in our cluster, you will see that some of the pods have been uh, recently restarted. So one thing to note here is it does not restart any of the cube system pod or the core or the essential pod in our cluster but we can specify a parameter for it uh, while we are bootstrapping our descheduler server so we can also select any of the policy which is mentioned under the documentation policies like high node utilization, low utilization nodes. For the references, we can follow this project link. The project is hosted under Kubernetes 6 on GitHub. There is a user friendly guide to follow uh, under the docs section, which you can always use to get started. We also have few implementation examples which will be easier to uh, read through while you are trying to implement different strategies then you can always reach out on six scheduling channel for any further queries under kubernetes slack i hope you would have liked this presentation thank you all for joining in